Here's how he unpacks it, and he breaks it right down for understanding in 1 Corinthians 1, 12 to 13. What I mean is that each one of you, each one of you says, I follow Paul. I follow Apollos. I follow Cephas, who is Peter. Or I follow Christ. Now, this used to puzzle me a bit because I thought, but that's right, isn't it? I follow Christ. But in the context of this, he's addressing that issue as well. It used to puzzle me. I'm like, Lord, what, what does that mean? Because I'm tending to want to skip over that because I think that's right. But clearly in the context of that, it's not. So now let me represent the scripture to you uh, just with the, the Greek translation as it pertains to the eye. And it looks like this. I follow Paul. See that word? Ego. I follow Apollos. See that word? Ego. I follow Peter. See that word? Ego. See the source? Now look at this. I, ego, follow Christ. Now in the context of the ones as it pertains to following man, that's religion. Ego of man appealing to the ego of man. All right, and so that's, that's a characteristic of religion is flattery. You want to flatter the leader. You want to be noticed because you think that will unrelease some kind of favor towards you. So that leaders become the source of your standing and your trust and your security. So you get into man flattery. But notice here, I follow Christ is it's uh, prefaced by this word ego. Ego. Ego is flesh. Yeah, but Richie, I follow Christ. Shouldn't I get some credit? Well, Jesus himself says, you did not choose me. I chose you. Oh, so that, that sort of flips, flips the picture a bit, right? I chose you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide or remain, all right? And so there's no fruit if I is the source of your standing, even if you profess it to be Christ. Because you're the source. I follow Christ. What's the characteristic of it? Um, and only you know for you and only I know for me. Because you can say I follow Christ and can be completely correct in your spirit, but you can also be fundamentally wrong if it's from the spirit of ego and pride. Yeah? So how do I know, Richie? You feel some sense of superiority as compared to others with your pronouncement. All right? So it's a bit like the self-righteous Pharisee who was quick to compare because now he's taking credit for something that he's been freely provided for. This is the subtlety of self. We tend to think of salvation as something that we took the initiative on, but it's not. We just, by God's grace, received a disclosure that we were always his. Even with that song we sang this morning, and 99% uh, of the hearts are really true in this, I have decided to follow Jesus. Please don't get offended. Um, and yet 99% of us, were, yeah, that's true. And there's no pride in that disposition. But there is also, I have decided to follow Jesus. I have. I'm talking about in the, in, the, in, the, in the ego. I have decided. I have decided. And suddenly you feel this aroma of arrogance starting to rise. I have decided. And I think there's a verse in that original song. Uh, how does it go? Though none go with me, still I will follow. <laughs> you know who wrote that? Peter. Though none go with me, still I will follow. Though none go with me, Jesus, still I will follow. Though none go with me, Jesus. And he's looking at the others. Still I will follow. No turning back. No turning back. About 48 hours later. Hey, Peter, aren't you Jesus' disciple? Hell no! 
<laughs> oh, no. Not me. You've got me mistaken for somebody else. But see how that statement on the face of it can sound really legit. Hey, but underneath it, if ego is the motivation, mm, he was in the flesh. And what comes when pride starts to arise? I mean, Peter had a little fall. <laughs> 